The Life Finder keeps Maya up. It was gonna be a close thing. And he like, what? Get out of no! No! Triple stun again. Big flanks coming out from the uh, blaze. It's a death metal though. Death yeah. metal into oh, the double, my. triple kill. Welcome everybody to the stream. Oh, I can turn this off. Ugh. We are here with Buff Gen versus Rush B, Division B East. Matchup between the uh, number nine and number ten seeds. So both teams looking to see if they can pull up into the standings. Maybe secure that number eight seed. Buff Chen has a chance here actually. Um, to move up, but uh, so does Rush B. So if they can pick up another two wins, their point totals will put them right underneath. Buff Chen will actually, if they pull up a uh, domination, can actually get uh, in range of Regen Phoenix here and uh, contest them for that number eight. Let's see if that is what occurs here. Uh, as far as the matches are concerned, um. <clears throat> Buff Chen lost the coin flip. Rush B took first pick. Buff Chen banned out Bull Sky and Braxis. Rush B took out Cursed and Dragonshire. And so we'll be going to Infernal Shrines for game number one. Righty. Uh, we should be pretty much ready to go. Just. I'm just giving the R in chat, making sure I've got everybody on the appropriate sides. I think I have everybody allocated. So we're already going right in draft. So there's Anduin. I know this is B West stats, but I think it might be general stats. I'm not sure though. We'll see if this is a little bit more accurate. Yeah, I don't think they've been updated for a little while. I'm not sure what the cause of that is. I think I'm just going to leave those alone for the time being. To focus on the draft for the most part. So Anduin Kalthos out. Kalthos a popular pick on Infernal Shrines, especially throughout the B division. Both sides, west and east. Anduin is also a pretty popular pick these days. As more and more people get comfortable with the pick, it is more and more often banned as it's uh, still a strong pick. Like I said, I think those numbers are not accurate. See if I can find a way to maybe affix those stats for the next matchup, but nothing we can do about it rate right the second. Thrall is going to be the pickup, uh, or the, the second ban on the side of Rush B, and that's going to be followed by Kira, making sure that players like Dominator can't get a hold of a strong melee dive hero, especially one that has a the appearance of being broken uh, like Kira does. I mean that's a that's a good point, Dankstrom. I don't know you're throwing shade at me uh, over your last um, thing because uh, people haven't rated you high enough in the power rankings. You guys are doing a good job in, you know, proving us wrong, and that's what it's all about. You're not a hundred percent experts. Uh, you guys needed to pick it up, and you did that. Anyways, so etc. Uther, Sylvanas. Interesting opening. We've really only been seeing. ETC in drafts um, in double support draft, but uh, looks like we're gonna get maybe a bit of a turnaround here on that. Not going to give too much away, but uh, I know that 
Rush B does like to run solo Uther, so. It is definitely, it's, you know, and we can kind of tell that's the case with the ETC, but at the same time, it could be double support. Actually, I'm completely wrong. It very well could very well be double support. I'm thinking dumbly here. ETC can be the offlaner, actually. It can be quite effective offlaner, for that matter. Little Bear's going to pick up the enemy rack. Uh, with Joe still available, I'm kind of surprised by the new Brack. There's also Diablo on this map, which is quite good. Lucio. Imperius. Uh, Imperius has dropped off a bit. Definitely not something that we've seen quite frequently. I'm going to pick up the Kerrigan. I like this, but it is not going to be double support. This is a fast draft. Everyone is coming in here knowing what they want to play for the most part, which is good. And Junkrat is going to be the final. That's going to be that for your draft. Let us know. Yeah, I'll I'll trust your opinion on that, uh, uh, Josh Sill. Um, as you are kind of the resident Diablo player, though Dinkstrom, I'm sure sure knows his way around the hero very as well. Make sure my overlays are working properly, which now they are. Mm. I was just responding to the, the points that were made in, in the uh, interview the other night. <laughs> Calling out the analysts for not giving you guys enough credit. To be fair, Bono did call Real Ultimate Mosh Pit, I think, to take Division, if it wasn't me. I can't remember. One of us two actually did say that you guys could take it. Yeah, I think the Joe just has so much utility on this map, and a new Brack can be such a risk, especially into things like Twin Blades Varian, which I expect to see from Arcane, um, as well as uh, Sylvanas, whose auto attack power is very good. But we're going to get into the game. For on the blue side, we have Buff Chan, Middle Bear on the new Brack, Thistledew on the Junkrat. Uh, SVX playing Imperious, Sosa playing Greymane, and uh, Kagatai on the Lucio. And on the other side of the map, we have Rush B, uh, Greenwall on the ETC, uh, Arcane is playing Varian, Batlock on the Kerrigan, Great Po2 on the Sylv, and of course Dominator playing ETC. <laughs> yeah. Well, your guys' opening wasn't great, and I have to respond to the week by week. But you guys have definitely made up for it. I mean, third place with a high point score is actually really good. So uh, I expect, and you know, big win over over some uh, top teams. So you guys have really shaken up it. Trust me, my power rankings this week will definitely reflect um, how well you guys have moved up, and uh, just like my last week's power rankings did. So anyway, back to the match at hand. Uh, kind of the opening uh, handshake, as I like to call it, did not go in favor of Rush B. I'd say Fatlock ate way more damage than he'd like to in that exchange. Uh, and unfortunately, weren't able to find the, uh, you know, the traction that you're looking for. That's right. I've also I also can sympathize for those that have a lot of hope at the beginning and then just kind of have it fallen off. As uh, lots of people were calling logical decision to take B West, and it's not looking like that's going to be the case. <laughs> we have to be spot on the next few games to even make playoffs. So <laughs> if we don't pick up wins now, we're in big big trouble. So 
So that was a good pick off onto the Varian in the top lane, apparently. Imperius winning that 1v1. Uh, early makes sense. But pre-4, I mean, it's a little bit rough. I'm surprised Varian was even able to trade that. But of course, in the bottom lane, they were able to pick off Junkrat, which kind of exchanges it out. But it is a net loss, I'd say, for the side of Rush B, considering it was their offlaner that died. Um, you probably don't want to get into those kind of, like, trades that early, especially since Varian doesn't really turn on until 4. Um, and even then, he's not really a full hero um, until he gets his, uh, his self-sustain. Uh, depending, of course, on the spec that you do go. And of course, we're going to see a nice setup. And Anubarak is going to get punished here. He does have his burrow out. But is he going to get out of range quick enough? And that's unfortunately the max range burrow does not get him out of trouble. That is going to be a kill. And this time, with that uh, uh, Colossus smash, we see Arcane actually taking out Imperius in the top lane. So getting his revenge. Um, I think Rush B is also an underestimated team as well. And they do have a really good shot at taking a playoff spot. Um, if they can kind of clean up their next two matches and kind of make sure that they, they clutch out good victories. But um, And I'd say that their their schedule is a little bit harder. This is a really good engagement. Nice setup by Kerrigan with the follow-up stun coming from Greenwall. And that's going to be another kill onto the Grey main. And uh, yeah, they're really pulling ahead with this uh, Kerrigan composition. Uh, well played so far by Rush B. Uh, and I like the C Smash. Like, I know it's been the meme build for Varian for a very long time. Basically, not the way to go. But since the major nerfs to Taunt, where it's now just hardly even a viable build, uh, and with some of the other kind of things coming into it, and some of the nerfs to other heroes, that's really what I mean to say. Um... I feel like C-Smash has, has got some pretty good potential, especially in combinations where your goal is to blow up a target. Um, you know, as follow-up to things like Kerrigan ETC, you're going to be able to get those kills. Um, even on heroes like Anubrak, which, uh, which is really good, especially since the changes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, perhaps. So a lot of good pressure here in the mid lane. Great value out of the first protector. More Punishers do a lot. In fact, um, as you know, even of all three of them, since the nerfs to Arcane Punishers, I'm actually a pretty big fan of the uh, Mortar Punishers. I think they do a lot of burst damage, and they really put a lot of threat onto heroes to get to die. Um, if you get jumped plus hit at the same time with those things, and you're low low health squishy target, you're gonna die. A lot of those situations. Um, I honestly think it does better siege damage than arcane early anyways uh, Frozen Punisher is still usually the one you want to see first and pretty much always frozen punishers Especially with Sylvanas just means that like the Punisher never takes damage Doesn't do a lot of damage outside of its regular attacks But uh, the fact that it doesn't die to anything coming from the fort means that it just it becomes significantly harder to burn down. So pretty much meta builds across the board. Uh, overpower into Colossus Smash into Lionheart. Um, I like Lionheart. It's a nice bit of burst healing. Uh, with this build in particular, with Colossus Smash, I think it's actually a really good pickup. Uh, second Wind is generally what's taken, but the thing with Colossus Smash is your goal is not to do long sustained fights. You just want to come in, burst, use the lion's, um, lion's heart to basically survive any counter burst and leave. That is essentially how you play that. In fact, I'd like to see him not go the protect and in fact go the uh, Warbringer because that allow him to, um, to rush himself out of danger um, after using his burst combo and just allow the sustained damage to be helped. It's also good for chasing targets, and that is what we're going to get. I really like this build. Uh, I'm a big fan. Greenwall's going to get booped over the wall. Good uh, um, Junkrat mine. Uh, then he went for the power slide, which was followed up smartly with the D-Shield. 
Um, they do have to burn a 90 second cooldown, but given the fact that they do have 10's advantage, you might as well, right? So we have a full five man push here in the bottom lane, and Uberak, for some reason, is in the top lane. And they're gonna lose a structure for a wall. But again, it was 10's to 9's, so not too much of a surprise there. We're gonna see Greymane move off into the mid lane to see if we can pick that up. He does have to be mindful of rotation. And we can actually see Rush be looking to see if they can find Greymane sticking around a little too long. That won't be the case though, he's gonna clear out. Nubrak just kinda still pushing this up pretty well. Good. And we're gonna have Uther come up here to clean this? Eh. Not my favorite hero to clean this up, but at the same time, I mean, basically Uther cleans this lane about as fast as Varian does with basically his uh, Lion's Fang. And that is a fantastic three-man mosh pick going to go into one kill, two kills, probably three kills here in Rush B just turning on the gas here, Buff Chen not in the position they want to be and that is going to be another kill for them wow and with this bottom fort out of the way and the sylvanas pushing and 13's potential um especially if they soak well which is exactly what they're doing we have etc in the bot lane we have um arcane in the mid lane that means we're going to be seeing a a chance to core here it seems odd but if they get kills off the push keep is gone like almost certainly this is a frozen Punisher with the Sylvanas. That's a lot. Their siege damage does kind of suck, though. Um, Kerrigan uh, and and Varian aren't the best siege damagers. <laughs> um, but Sylvanas is really good, so. That was a crazy good mosh pit, though. Got all of the interrupts out of the way. There was nothing they could do. And now, Frozen Punisher is going to pop over the wall. I'd like to see them burn that top one so that they can threaten them with this dive composition. But they're going to go through the front gate. That thing is taking a lot of damage, actually. And uh, yeah, I think actually pathing through here would have been good. But they're going to be able to get stun into stun. The Immortal and the Kerrigan getting those initial initi er, uh, stuns off. And then the follow-up from ETC is going to guarantee the kill here. Punisher is going to go down. Um, I think they fed too much health off of it, and the death timers are too low to really core here. Um, this is a risk call. It is it is an okay call. I definitely don't have any problems with Rush Peak looking to end the game here. But, uh, but definitely a risky call. And we're going to see why it's a risky call right here. So Dominator Dirk has, does get Divine Shield to keep himself alive and he's gonna feed himself a death to help his team try to escape this i mean it's okay to go for the core there but look how little siege damage they had available with short death timers um and the fact that they didn't if there was a half health punisher there different story arcane is low And Buff Chan is getting desperate. They gotta find some ways to get back into this game. And, and I guess one of the um, decisions that they're gonna make here is down a talent tier, run over and steal this top camp. Um, not sure what that's gonna do. It's gonna be a pretty easy clear up for them. I think they would get more value from just soaking every lane. Nubrak's gonna sit in this wall. They're gonna maybe look to take a fight here, but no, the disengage comes out. And Rush B is in position to engage themselves, so. This uh, wave's getting good value, though. Probably going to take down this fort, but 16s are right on the horizon as the soak game has been better um, from uh, Rush B. And uh, if they get... I would actually, since 13s are picked up here, they're actually going to go for the camp here. This is a good play in the sense that it's, uh, it's aggressive, um, and it definitely forces a response from your enemy here and 16s are almost there and with the camp capture that's going to be 16 so that means without an invade coming in from buff chen that's it they they have no way to contest on the map until they hit 16s themselves which 
they're almost a full three levels behind, which is a substantial difference. And uh, with that level 16 advantage, Reshpi is going to say, hey, well, you know what? I think this mid keep is ours. And again, dropping this mid keep means Punisher goes right to core. And uh, if it gets kills, and it's going to be another Mortar Punisher, so it can threaten that very well. It could be the game as well. We are going to see a good three man stun. Mosh Pit's available though, and he's going to land it on an Uberak, and that's going to be a full duration. They might get the kill off of it too, as well. Riptire disengaging actually did a really good job in peeling an Uberak out there so he didn't die. So the counter engage might be enough here to come through, but again, it's 16 to 13, which means this is a tough fight. Uphill battle, no matter what. Uh, one shame I'm going to talk about here, and this might not necessarily be because of skill and more has to do with the fact that these fights have been so fast and not sustained in any real way, is dagger build. And uh, if, if you know that that's going to be the case, I, I really don't see a point in taking that build. Um, we are going to see a good aggression onto Sylvanas. Has to use the unstoppable to stay alive there. And the pressure's still coming through, so despite this being a 13 or 14 to 17 fight, we might see some kills, but they do actually pick off Lucio. Varian does go down. So Vaughn is trying to get back into this fight, but it is going to be Kerrigan that dies, although they will trade out Dominator for, uh, for Imperius. And there are three catapults here at the bottom being zoned out currently by a couple minions, but that can't stay there permanently. And realizing that they still kind of have the edge here with the taps, we're going to see them step up here and actually continue to clear this out. Anubrak actually is so hurt, he has to walk out. Junkrat's going to stay here and do his best to clear this up. Anubrak's going to back out and clear out those catapults. Realizing that that's the case, Greenwall steps, steps up, tries to zone this out. But they are still significantly behind. Oh man, if he throws a mine over there, that was going to be the easiest steal of his life on those minions. That's unfortunate. But they still do have a 3-2 to two advantage. Nubrak is back in here, and I don't think that they can win this race. So it is going to be Arcane Punisher going to buff Chen. Nice counter engage, though, from Arcane with a Wailing Arrow. It's going to be the kill. That low health Nubrak was definitely overextending. We do get the kill from Greymane onto Sylvanas, but that's a two for one. And despite taking the object er, objective, we're definitely going to see Rush B just turn it on and go right at them. Lots of value from that rip tire though as everyone was so very tightly gripped up, grouped up but yeah you don't want to be losing two heroes when your goal here is to try to turn things around especially gray main which is one of your major kind of push down structures uh unit so junkrat's gonna come into range here gonna pop a mine down so that he can poke in safely endless nades is online so he's gonna do his best to keep them coming but that arcane punisher got literally nothing done it did not even kill a tower. So very good defense from Rush B. The counter engage onto Nubrak, onto Greymane, despite losing Sylvanas, was a huge mitigation. There goes the Cocoon to see if they can find a pick, and that is going to happen. We do have a uh, Mosh Pit popping onto two, but the mine does finally come out and interrupts that. And now Rush B is in a terrible spot. We're going to see Kerrigan die here. And that's a three for nothing. And that's the turnaround that we actually want to see from Buff Chen. But the question here is, what are they going to do with it? Can they push down structures? Uh, if I were them, I would just rotate top, clear out that top structure. Uh, push it down. See if they can get into maybe the keep. Um, they are going to clear out this camp here and push down the mid fort, which is fine. Um, trickle experience will help out, but uh, the reason the top play is good is that allows them to be able to uh, push in with this if they can win that objective fight in the top lane. Uh, Junkrat is going to split off to go push out the bottom lane, and that's another target there. I think the mid lane was the one lane that it didn't really matter whether they pushed it down or not. Um, but they, it, did, did, it is missing a keep, so having one catapult push up in there is still a good thing. But yeah, they, they haven't, they got a fort. It's just better than nothing. 
But uh, I feel like they could have done a bit more with that. I think uh, splitting for this camp was kind of pointless. They could all just five that mid, took that fort down way faster, rotated the top lane, took that fort down, and things would be looking a little bit cleaner. And now we get the engagement coming in. Nice stun follow up that ripped to, or the um, the sound barrier going to keep everyone alive. Sosa finding another angle. Look at the health bars. Uther just not able to keep anyone alive in these sustained fights. So when these aren't fast and they aren't getting these kills quick, Rush B's composition just starts to fall apart. If you don't have that mosh pit available, which we saw on that initiation, which you did not have, they cannot, you know, stall out the counter aggression long enough to get a good advantage. But they did take the follow-up fight. And they took another 3-0. On the same targets for that matter. Uther, Varian, and Kerrigan all died again. And so this is good. They took top fort. They're going to push down this keep. And they've got plenty of time to do so. They should not back off of this. No, 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 no. They did take it. All right. You can go for the safe play. There we go. There's the engagement, actually. And we're going to see maybe they can actually get onto... Uh, Potu, but it's actually going to be Greenwall that goes down, but a death mosh of five man death mosh. It's not enough though. There's no follow-up CC So yeah, this keep is down. Uh, everyone is respawning. So you might as well just back up and see if you can pick up um, The uh, the objective now and it is a frozen Punisher, which means threat is good and It looks like we're gonna get the age-old look at how far these lanes are pushed up for catapults in the mid lane is an absolute risk and there's no vision on this junkrat is going to back up that should stall things out at least a little bit but uh, the bees are gonna have to come through and uh is the siege damage good enough they took so much damage from that they just have to all in this core four catapults is might be just enough we'll have to see there's a lot of pressure going down sylvanas is allowed to get all the damage and she does go down Arcane's still hitting it. He's going to get it. There's going to be... That's going to be the end of the game. Wow, Rush B making the call, seeing those catapults in the mid lane, and Buff Chen not not kind of being defensive enough. Um, I think they needed to, to push out that lane further with Junkrat. They had no reason to rotate him up to the objective until they saw everyone on the map. And uh, that cost them the game. So, uh, yeah. Basically... It was just uh, a late recovery. They had already lost two keeps. The minion lanes have built up too much. And the fact that... Uh, and then they just weren't watching for that core call. Not well enough. They did bring Junkrat Bat, but he should have already been in those lanes, knocking out those waves of catapults before they went to the objective. Or at least had him doing that as they got it. Um, and he would have been able to scout out that rotation well before it came in and actually cost them the game. So good on Rush B to identify the win condition and and look to close it out. You know, they knew where they were standing and that Punisher pushing down top lane was almost a certain GG. And uh, yeah, so let's gonna go on to a break while we set up game number two. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody, to game number two between Buff Chen and Rush B. We had a doozy at the beginning here uh, with Rush B picking up the victory on a core call that was quite desperate at that moment as Buff Chen was definitely poised to take the game if it went on any longer. But taking advantage of those two early keep uh, takedowns and the catapults that were built up into it, they managed to close out the victory um, using leveraging that advantage. And it was very good on them, very good call. Uh, we're already setting up for game number two. This is where we are. Rush B is taking map pick. We're going to be going to Sky Temple. So we'll see if they can close it out on their map choice or if we're going to see Buff Chen turn things around. Yeah, I mean, Buff Chen, uh, you know, uh, just to comment on what you've been saying for the most part there, Josh, the... Buff Chen played a clean game in the late game and really just made one mistake that cost them at the end. But the fact that they lost keeps prior to is what set up the win condition for Rush B. And Rush B recognizing that made the appropriate call. I don't know if that's too demoralizing. It's just one of those things where it just kind of, you didn't see it. But you were making a comeback and it definitely means that you can, you can probably bring that into game number two. So we're going to go into draft number two right away without any hesitation. The tzatziki sauce. So, I think with Sky Temple in particular, it's quite common to see things change up in the drafts as there are certain heroes that can be significantly better threats on this map. But we're going to see Buff Chen stick with the let's remove the Kael'thas and Rush B is going to respond with the same thing on the other side with Anduin being banned out. The Haka, that's an that's an example of uh you know of of a hero that's relative to this map specifically. And we're sticking with the Anduin Thrall, so just removing specific tools that Buff Chen perhaps likes to play with, and that's gonna make things a little bit rougher for them. ETC being the first pickup, and that's going to go to the other side, and that's going to be quickly responded to by Sylvanas and Anubarak. So I like the adjustment there on the first pick ETC. That's using your the value. That's getting that's getting what you want out of that first pick option. Um, because right now, win rate wise, ETC is definitely outperforming Anubarak. There's no doubt about it. And I mean, it's easy to see. ETC is generally an easier player to hear or hero to play. Um, and hasn't been majorly nerfed, has been actually buffed recently. So uh, those two factors, I think, make a, a big difference. Uh, a little bit of an adjustment, though. We do see Fatlock picking up the Sylvanas. There might still be some swapping around that happens, so I'm going to keep my out, eye out for that. But perhaps feeling, just because they're not going to be going with the Kerrigan, feeling that Fatlock is, is a, a better pick for the hero. Or there's something else they want to play. Junkrat is a nice ad adaption. And that's a lot of what you want to use that third band slot for. Either just again to remove any power heroes if they do have any remaining on the enemy team. Or take out map specific or uh, match specific heroes that were strong in the previous setup. And Junkrat was definitely getting a lot of value in the first game. I don't, unfortunately. 
I, I didn't host this match, so I actually can't make them remake it. <laughs> but we're going to see Lieutenant Morales and his Zebo, so perhaps we're going to be seeing some cheese. Uh, that t screams at me mostly that we're going to be seeing uh, Juice Pirates. Which makes me sad. Don't like Juice Pirates. I've never liked Juice Pirates. It's just not, not something I enjoy at all. And the Tyrael is going to definitely secure that as exactly what we're seeing on this map. Ugh. I'm just going to be a silent caster for uh, the remainder of this one. <laughs> but that's the draft. It's the draft. Yeah, it is a challenge. I can't keep my mouth shut. But. Eh. She's pirates. <laughs> you know, I really do want to make them remake this now. <laughs> I agree 100%. Sky Temple Juice Pirates. With the new Zebo too, of all things. And I agree with DB Smiley. Ugh, Nazebo. I'm I I don't maybe have the same level of hate for the hero that he does. But uh we're not friends, generally speaking. So, regardless of my personal opinions about this draft and map. We are going to be getting into game and number two, Sky Temple, Buff Chen versus Rush B. And on the side of the blue, we have Buff Chen, Middle Bear on the ETC, Thistle Dew playing the Hanzo Kagatai back on the Lucio, Sosa on the Greymate again, and SVX also on Imperius for a second time. On the red side of the map, we do have Rush B looking for that 2 0 domination to help maybe uh, threaten playoffs a little bit more aggressively. We have Greenwall on Lieutenant Morales, Fatlock on the Anubarak, Great Potu on the Sylvanas, Dominator on the Nazebo, and Arcane on the Tyrio. So my graphics is completely wrong because they did this swap shenanigans, and I say serves them right. Um, they don't get the graphics to say the right people. That's their problem, not mine. <laughs> I can, but I'm not going to bother. I already put the graphic up, so <laughs> it's their own fault. Gonna do all the swappy shenanigans to troll the caster, and that's what you get. You know, because the graphics matter so much. Pierce gonna be picked up in the bottom lane. Good engagement there, finding kills, and Juice Pirates finding kills in early in the game and finding experience leads is not where you want to be if you are Buff Chen. Hopefully they can start turning things around here because uh, it's really hard to shut this down without taking structures of your own. So they're going to want to be super aggressive on a lot of these plays. I mean, it looks like they're trying to put the pressure into the bottom lane at least a little bit here. We need to see four-man rotation to try to stop this. Dominator's getting a lot of pressure there from Sosa, but he has to go super deep to try to kill it. And, of course, Morale is very good at keeping heroes alive. In fact, ETC is what goes down. And now things are going a little bit worse again for Buff Chen here with this composition. And that's going to be Hanzo having to leap over the wall from that terrible threat of Nazebo. I'm pretty sure he could have still just won that trade. <laughs> not sure what he was scared of. Just dodge the toads. <laughs> dodge the spiders and you friggin' win that fight. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> So 
So camp's gonna come out. Yeah, it looks like the Juice Pirates comp is more or less just playing this normally. They don't really seem to care. Just just playing the map, being allowed to do so. Uh, Buff Chen hasn't been aggressive enough to really make things happen here. So, And when they've been aggressive, they haven't been able to find the kills. Dominator is going to get two people in a zombie wall and survive the gank attempt, despite being extremely low. And now this camp's going to push down top lane with Sylvanas. And with the fact that they have this tower pushing this, this is actually very scary. Because once 10 hits, that keep is absolutely free. And uh, that's all they care about. They don't even care about the rest of this. And bot lane's probably the ideal lane, but... Uh, eh, I think they can just take whatever they want. Yeah, it kind of shows the weakness of the of the off lane when you can't feel like Imperius can go off on his own to do the lane soaking business for you. Then why draft them? Uh, you know, if it's too risky to run that style, it just seems to be like then there's no reason to run him there. I don't know, especially not on big macro maps. Imperius power level just doesn't seem to be high. Uh, out outside of matchups where the macro is very limited, you know. Uh, I can see him work a bit on Braxis. I definitely see him work on Battlefield of Eternity. You can even argue he can work on things like Infernal Shrines perfectly fine, but on maps like Cursed Hollow, Alterac Pass, or Sky Temple, uh, Imperius would definitely be my last choice for an offlaner. Well, so far, they've been able to take out one fort. They're pushing in the second fort. Greyman went cocktail build, so he has no way to actually kite pressure or actually use his auto attacks effectively outside of diving. And if they take this bottom lane fort, which they've been able to maintain control over the game so far, I mean, top fort's gone already. They just get to tens and they've got the pressure they need. Nazebo does not have great hero damage early, but his 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 stuff still affects structures all right. It's still slow poison damage, but it's damage all the same. It's like trying to pull this off with Lunara. Like, I mean, with that said, Nature's Culling does a lot, but. Oh, uh, yeah, if everybody here is for tryhards, uh, I apologize if I baited you into thinking that was tonight. That was never my intention. Uh, I'm doing all of my replay casts tomorrow. So I'm probably going to do between four to six tomorrow. So that's a long day of replay casts. And that's a kill on Hanzo who got caught out in an Azebo wall again. So Nazebo proving me wrong and saying, you know what? I'm going to get damn good value out of this hero just because you said you dislike him. And you know what? I don't care if you win with Nazebo. That does not make me like the hero anymore. <laughs> and there is the Juice Pirates. We are getting the quick rotation to the top lane. But they're, it's a conservative one. They didn't really go for the keep. They just went for the front wall. Interesting. Uh, Cocoon. Uh, they're going to put the pressure on, but here's the counterattack, and this could actually be a problem. And it looks like Fatlock is a bit in trouble. I don't think he's in a good position here, and that's going to be a kill, actually. And they can chase this down with a positioning of ETC, but he's not coming back towards the DPS. He's chasing down Morales, which is all right for the most part. They do trade out Lucio. So good on Rush B to get something out of that. And uh, they got a front wall for two for one. I actually think Rush B is happy with that.
Sure, yeah, I can pop up the talents. No problem. Sorry, guys. It is level 10, so I apologize. Mind control. So that's it. Gargantuan's good. That'll help with the siege. Uh, Rushby is behind on the map for sure. Like, they're definitely behind in the macro. But picking up that mid force, good. It's a good start. And there goes the Juice Pirates again. And this, again, they're just going to just slow siege this. It's a five man dragon arrow. Might stall this out long enough for the fight to come in. And I don't know about this. Like, is it going to work? Is this just going to cost them? The black arrows are going to be coming out. We get the kill on Morales. That's going to be a kill on Dominator as well. So they do get the keep. But here's the here's the question, though. They get the keep with the Tyrael kill. Nice. Two objectives is going to be nasty. Like, that's going to actually reverse a lot of this damage significantly. Now, we do have Juice Pirates up again another 10 seconds, and Sanctification wasn't used. So did they just fly in and go for core? Did they fly in and trade out because they're heading structures? No, they're going to go for a camp. Yeah, 100% you go straight keep. <laughs> and you, you ignore the wall. They did get the keep anyways, which was fine, and that's the goal in the long run. But now they're losing two full structures here, and that's a scary thing. Like, that they, they're going to get some of this objective back, but aside from loss of keep in the top lane, honestly, buff Chen's sitting pretty good. And they can actually go core now, and that, that, that uh, it is, though, scary here. They're going to push up this lane, and now we're going to see the core attempt. Core attempt number one. Sanctification is up. They're going to boss here. And this might just be another risky timing situation. That isn't worth it. Yeah, can ETC stall this out with... I don't know. This could be core. The dragon arrow doesn't hit. That's actually a huge problem. And now we're going to see this core go down. They kill Morales, but she's not the biggest threat. They're going to kill Sylvanas. Tyrael's going to go down. But I think Nazebo can clean this up. No, no, now they just need to go bot and win. This camp's a problem, though. It has to be cleared up. The boss is going to definitely threaten this keep, but they really cannot afford for another core call. And I think the boss, in the end was uh was a problem so they have to core here we're gonna see morales look to set this up but they're gonna have to defend 16s are in place here for buff chen but they have to core here like they have literally no other option because one more juice pirates is is death for them so the fight has to come out they don't have sanctification they have med back if they can stall this out they can win. Just stay on them. Just stay on them. Don't let them go out of vision. No! This is going to be it. That's going to be game. GG. Rush B wins. 5% on the core. It's GG. Sorry. You know, I, I feel like Buff Chen, if they just stuck on them, you can interrupt the medvac if you just dive them. You could see they were escaping. You saw the direction they were going. You just chase them down, interrupt the medvac by blowing it up, and, and you kill them, and then the core goes down. You win. The fact of the matter is, is they went for the core call when they're at 5%. And that's just kind of, uh, it's just one of those things where if you're not super experienced at going against Juice Pirates, even if it's not the best Juice Pirates, it, it's going to get you. And uh, I think the boss play was risky. 
Um, if they were in a better position for a defense there, they can clean up the fight, then go boss. Um, not lose as much on their core, and then they could have been able to probably turn that, that around. Um, so that's going to be it, though. That's game number two. 2-0 two domination. Rush B climbing back up in the standings and taking out their slightly ahead rivals, Buff Chen. Well, let's set up an interview.